kit building is a great way to enjoy radio and there are plenty of kits available. This short video shows you how I constructed the G0NQE Acorn SDR receiver. This kit costs around £20 and allows you to receive from the SSB segment of the 80 meter band. The first step of any construction project is to prepare yourself and your workplace so that the process goes smoothly and you reduce the chance of making annoying mistakes. Familiarise yourself with the instructions in full before you start. It may also help to look over the circuit diagram, but it's especially useful to familiarise yourself with the board layout as orientation is critical for some components. For this project I've decided to try using a small turntable with some anti-slip matting on top. This should make it easy to work on the PCB as I go through each step of the construction process. Ideally you should learn the colour coding on resistors so that selecting them is straightforward. However this isn't essential as there is plenty of help in interpreting resistor colour codes available, such as from this website which allows you to set the colour code from drop down boxes and calculate the value with the press of a button. But if like me you're getting a bit hard of seeing with small objects or are colour blind and can't easily see the colour bands clearly, you can simply use a multimeter to measure individual components before installing them. A magnifying glass is also great help for reading small writing and for inspecting your handiwork as you go along. The instructions for the kit say to start by installing the 12 wire links. These should go on the upper side of the PCB but I've decided to use enamelled copper wire on the underside of the board. By removing the enamel from the tips of accurately cut lengths of wire I've been able to solder the links in place quite easily. Here I'm installing one of the IC sockets. I like to solder the corner pins first so that the IC socket is held securely in place on the board before completing the other pins. Soldering effectively takes a bit of practice, but soon becomes natural. To make a good solder connection, make sure the joint is properly in place first, then heat with the iron before touching with the tip of the solder. The solder should flow through the joint, leaving a bright finish. Try not to overheat the joint as you will easily damage delicate components or fine tracks on the PCB. The whole process of completing a joint should typically take no more than a second. By starting with wire links and IC sockets, you get plenty of practice before moving on to more sensitive components. Once you've completed some soldering, it's good practice to inspect the joints to make sure they're good quality. I'm using a magnifying glass to do this, and this particular magnifier has an additional high power lens formed into the main lens for extra magnification. Here you can see the underside of the PCB with my enameled copper wire links as well as the soldered IC sockets. A close-up view through the magnifier shows there are no solder bridges or splashes on the board to cause short circuits later. Once the regulator IC3 and the rest of the supply circuitry is in place on the board, the instructions say to check the supply voltages. I'm doing this by temporarily connecting a 9 volt battery and checking the voltages from ground to pin 14 on ICs 1 and 5 and pin 16 on IC2. These voltages should be 5 volts. The voltage on pin 8 of IC4 should be about 8.5 volts. I had a 100 path capacitor missing, so I substituted one from my component drawer because I had one ready to hand. Missing parts is quite a common problem with kits, so if this happens to you, get in touch with your kit supplier to get a replacement. We're now nearly finished, with just a few remaining components to solder into place, and the board is now starting to look like the picture on the website. But this is where I made a simple mistake. The link, which I'm fitting into place, is to select between the internal bandpass filter and an external one. I forgot to solder the pins onto the PCB underneath, with the result that this did not work initially. It just goes to show how important it is to inspect and re-inspect your work at every step. For the final assembly, we need to make a cable for the INQ output to the computer's sound card. As with all SDRs, the majority of the signal processing takes place on the computer, so the output from our kit is a baseband signal suitable for processing in software. After I've twisted three wires together and tinned the ends, 
I'm using a multimeter to beep out the connections on the 3.5mm audio socket to make sure they are correct. The RF connection is initially going to be this simple phono socket and twisted pair, but it's possible to replace these with coax and a better performing RF socket later. Finally, the three ICs are plugged into place, making sure the orientation is correct of course. So now we connect up the station antenna and listen to the results on a laptop running SpectraView. Thank <laughs> you. 